Okay, day two. Um, I've rearranged the rotor magnets to face outwards. We have alternating poles north, south, north, south, and so on. Six magnets in a ring appears to be the most efficient. And a different stator magnet, which is a horseshoe shaped magnet that's been harvested from a typical hard drive. I believe this one is the CD that I harvested this one from. Now, the unusual properties of this magnet are that the poles face this way and this way. So you might have north facing like this, and on the bottom side, south facing that way. It's as if you had taken two pancake magnets that were polarized on their flat surfaces and put them side by side, alternating poles. So about halfway through the middle of this horseshoe, the, polar the, the poles flip. And there's a very sharp transition point right in the middle as I cross the rotor. You can see that pretty well. Now, on the back side, you have the opposite. So if this is north, then the back side is south. And then down below is north, and then the front side is south. When you take this horseshoe magnet and put it against the backing plate, that effectively carries the magnetic lines of flux through the back and concentrates all the magnetic lines of flux, leaving the magnet across the front. There are virtually no stray magnetic lines of force coming off the back of this backing plate. Everything is concentrated in the front, which creates a great deal more magnetic force against the rotor. So much more so that if I try to get this flywheel now, it's probably going to make a light out of the app, I'm sure. It's difficult to get the flywheel going, and of course, I'm having no trouble with it right now. But I found it much easier by adding some weight. And what I have here is a one quart container of flooring tile adhesive. Watch this. See, this is a full container, and it is quite heavy. Seal it. I'm going to take it and stick it right in the middle of the rotor. Fits actually very nicely. And I want you to pay particularly close attention to how quickly I can make this mass accelerate. All right, here we go. The flywheel effect makes it a little bit more easy for me to get a steady rhythm to keep the timing on the rotor magnets where I need to have it. And of course you can see very little movement on the on the stator magnet to create quite a bit of movement on the rotor. variation on the scoring concept with the switching taking place now on the standard magnet instead of on the rotor magnets. If you recall the scoring, the, the typical scoring design, we had pancake magnets sitting this way with the poles facing up and down and one starter magnet facing this way, transitioning poles by moving up and down across the poles. But we couldn't intersect enough magnetic lines of force to generate, uh, to generate the force that I wanted this wheel to generate. And of course, we have the, the output wheel here. And this little gadget right here is the DC electric motor that I will be attaching down here to the gear, to this output shaft right here, to this output gear. And hopefully closing the loop, creating an actuator that moves the rotor, the, the standard magnet up and down, and then keep the device self-sustained with enough excess energy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 
hearing the United States can ever sing is where the rubber meets the road, or where the truth will be told. If you look down here, I've attached a small motor to a small gear. The motor is actually harvested from a, I think a car steering. This is the uh, laser positioning motor. And I've built up the worm gear shaft with a small uh, spacer. It's just the inner diameter of the gear that goes on top that matches with the output gear of the test assembly. Still using the horseshoe magnet as my spanner. Still using the sophisticated, very expensive flywheel. And right now the digital multimeter is in the 2 volt scale. Started. Get it going long enough here, and fast enough. Let's see. Actually, we get about 1.7 volts maximum with the speed that I'm able to generate by hand. I can switch to the milliamp scale. Go to 200 milliamps to full range. I'll repeat the experiment. Obviously, what I need is a different motor that will produce a higher voltage for the same revolutions per minute with a higher current. Obviously, it will create more of a frictional load, but quite frankly, I don't notice any difference in resistance on this on the static magnet as I move it up and down. So it really doesn't matter. 